know what the name of this compound is? Is that a cyclopane? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is cyclopropane. Yeah, cyclo means ring. Like cyclo means cycle. Oh, oh, cycle. Okay. I don't know if for some reason I kept thinking a circle. <laughs> ah, well, in a way it's a circle. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't have to be a pure circle. It just has to be a cycle or a ring. Okay. So this is cyclopropane. This would not be considered a saturated hydrocarbon? That's a little tricky. Um, I guess it is saturated in the sense that there are no double bonds. Um, uh, or triple bond. So in a sense, it is saturated. Although it's true that when you form a cycle, you end up with fewer hydrogens than if you were straight chain. It's true um, that when you form a cycle, there's fewer. Um, uh, so actually I, actually, I think that would be a little bit a matter of taste. Uh, I, I would consider this saturated, but there is another uh, way of looking at this that would say this does have a degree of unsaturation, because it does have fewer hydrogens than it would if it was straight chain. Maybe that's worth spelling out. How many hidden hydrogens are on this carbon? Two. And how many on this carbon? Two. And two here. So this would be the way to write this showing all the hydrogens. So the formula for this is C3H6. My teacher always, she always goes over it with like the, the formula with the like the CN, the H2N. Right. So is that is that always going to apply or is that like not the thing I should Yeah, do? That, I don't know if you need, uh, you mean your OCHEM teacher? Yeah. Yeah, so that, that always works. I don't think you need that for your general chemistry class. But we can look at that in a second. So how many, hydrogen, how many hidden hydrogens are in this compound? Eight. Eight. Yeah. Remember when I said earlier that if, you have, if two compounds both have the same number of carbons, they have to have the same number of hydrogens? Uh, if they don't have any double bonds? Well, you can see I kind of lied, because that only applies <laughs> if one of them is not a ring. Right. So I said before that if two compounds are both saturated and they don't have um, any, uh, if they're both saturated and have the same number of carbons, they automatically have the same number of hydrogens. But that's only if there's no rings involved. Um, so here we have uh, this ring. So here we have three, uh, three carbon chain with six hydrogens, and here we have a three uh, carbon chain with eight. So notice, by the way, um, are these two compounds isomers? because they have different numbers of hydrogens. These are not isomers. So, we would not, so you would not want to include these cyclic compounds when you're trying to draw all the isomers uh, of something unless, unless they are cyclic. Yeah, and as you were mentioning here, the general pattern here is that for a cyclic compound, the number of carbons is n and the number of hydrogens is 2n. Notice how here this is twice this number. Well, that'll generally be always the case when you have a simple cyclic compound. You'll have twice as many hydrogens as carbons. Whereas here, the number of, if the number of carbons is n, the number of hydrogens would be 2n plus 2. Does that work here? So if n was 3, this would be 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 2, which is 8. So if there's no ring, then this is the pattern for the number of hydrogens. Um, this is worth knowing for an O-chem class, but I don't think this would be too important for your general chemistry class. Okay. Okay, okay so the name of this would be cyclopropane. So what's the name of this compound? Cyclobutane? Good. <laughs> How about this one? because it's a ring, and pentane because there's five carbons. We can't just call it pentane, because this is pentane. This is pentane, this is cyclopentane. And what's the name of this? Exo, I mean cyclohexane. Cyclohexane. Let's 
try naming this. Yeah, either of those would be good. Okay, so now let's start by numbering the parent chain. Um, well, it would make sense to call this number one because we want to give the lowest possible number to the substituent. Remember that we want to give the lowest possible numbers to the substituents. And we would treat this like a substituent. Well, what do we call a one carbon substituent? Oh, methyl. Methyl. And what's the location of that? Well, the number one carbon. So this would be one methyl, one methyl cyclopropane. So we can still use our naming systems for substituents here as well. We're going to name the ring as the parent, and then everything else would be a substituent. Okay. All right. However, if you think about it, the one here is kind of redundant. Because if there's only one substituent, it has to get the number one. Because we're going to try to give the lowest possible numbers. So it would also be acceptable just to call this methyl cyclopropane. The book just calls it methyl cyclopropane, but I think you would get full credit for writing it this way as well. Okay. Let's try giving a name to this compound. Now you named, yeah, so you left out the cyclo. Oh, I forgot the cyclo. Oh, okay. This would be one ethyl cyclopentane. We have to include the cyclo. Okay, the ring, the ring. So I've noticed a common student mistake is oftentimes students forget to include cyclo. Another mistake, though, is that after they've done a lot of problems with rings, they start calling everything cyclo, even if there is no ring. So you want to include cyclo when it's appropriate and leave it out when it's not appropriate. So we call this 1-ethyl cyclopentane. Or I suppose it would be okay to just call it ethyl cyclopentane, because it has to be on the number one. But it's fine to call it 1-ethyl cyclopentane. Good. So let's try naming this. That looks good to me. Good. So this is more good practice with substituents. I uh, did a good job numbering this. Here would be a wrong way to number it. Because we want to give the lowest possible set of numbers. So it's not good enough to give the one of the substituents the number one. We might as well give the next substituent the number two. That's the lowest possible set of numbers. So this would be an incorrect way of numbering this. All right, and in this case, it would certainly be conventional to include both numbers. You really need those. So this would be one, two, dimethyl, cyclopentane. Good. 